Hello everyone. So in today's class, we will quickly see the anatomy of flowering plants. This chapter is the sixth chapter in your NCRT book. Now coming to what is anatomy. Anatomy is the study of internal parts of the plant or internal organs of the plant. That's called anatomy. Okay. So when we are telling about the internal structures of the plant, we need to know about cells of the plants. Then we can go about studying the various tissues as well as the organization of tissues. So what are cells? Cells are the unit of life. Unit of life. So by telling unit of life, we mean that they perform all the essential activities a living organism has to do. And some of these cells organize themselves to form a group of cells called tissues. So what are tissues? Tissues are the group of cells having common origin and perform the same functions. Okay, so in plants, uh, we classify these tissues into two types. One is meristematic tissues and permanent tissues. Meristematic tissues are those which are actively dividing cells. Okay, meristematic tissues are actively dividing cells. Their main function is to divide and increase the number of cells so that the new permanent cells could be added. They also help in replacing of the lost parts of the plant. And what are the characteristics of meristematic tissues? The characteristics are they are oval in shape or they are hexagonal in shape. Okay, they have a very prominent nucleus. A prominent nucleus then they do not have they do not have plastids plastids are the chloroplast chromoplast and leucoplast so they cannot photosynthesize they have no color and they also cannot store any food because they don't have plastics so this is a general characteristics of meristematic tissues now, what are permanent tissues? Permanent tissues are those which have taken up a defined structure and function. Okay, that is, we call this as one word called differentiation. Differentiation, okay. And permanent tissues have originated from meristematic tissues. Now, in this video, we'll quickly see the classification of meristematic tissue. Okay, so meristematic tissues can be classified based on various criteria. So here we are going to see two criteria for classification of meristematic tissue. One is based on their location. So based on the location, we group them into three types. One is apical meristems, intercalary meristems and lateral meristems. Apical meristems are present towards the tip of the root and shoot. Now, if you consider this is the shoot tip, the meristems will be located in the tip of it. And if this is the tip of the root, meristems would be located here. Now, what is the function of them? The function of them is to increase the length of the tip so that new cells could be added and below part where immediately the apical meristems are there, meristems can undergo differentiation. Okay, next, intercalary meristems, they are present above and below the nodal region. So this is the stem, this is a node, they are present above the nodal region and below the nodal region, that is in the internodal part. And these intercalary meristems will increase the height of the plant. As the plant grows, the height has to increase, so this assists in increasing the height. Next, lateral meristems. Lateral meristems are present along the sides of the stem. They increase the girth or the diameter of the stem. Example for lateral meristems would be cambium. Cambium. Okay. So cambium are two types. Inter and intrafascicular cambium. And we have cor cambium as well. Cor cambium which brings about extra stellar growth. So these are the two types of cambium we come across. That's the example for lateral meristems. Okay, now this is what I was telling. Uh, the 
classification okay apical meristem towards the tip and intercalary above and below the node lateral meristems along the sides okay now quickly let's see the classification of meristem based on origin all right so based on origin uh, like uh, from where the meristematic cells have uh, arisen from okay we have three types of meristems that is classified okay so one is the first one is promeristem promeristem also called as primordial meristems so these are the ones that originated from the embryonal cells now quickly recollect embryonal cells embryonal cells have arisen from zygote the zygote divides by mitosis to form a group of undifferentiated cells called embryonal cells so those meristems arising from these embryonal cells are called promeristems or primordial meristems next second one primary meristems is a second type so primary meristems are those which are derived from promeristems okay so what do these primary meristems give rise to they give rise to the initiation of root and shoot okay the initiation of root and shoot is formed by primary meristems next the third type of meristems the third type will be secondary meristems so secondary meristems are those which becomes meristems in the later stages okay a permanent tissues which has taken up a defined shape and structure will come back to meristematic life and those cells are called as secondary meristem this generally appear at the later stage and this is one of the best example for secondary growth okay so some permanent tissues revert to a meristematic condition and cut off new cells that is it gives rise to new tissues interfacicular cambium phylogen or core cambium are the examples okay so that's secondary meristems so based on origin we classify meristems into three types promeristems primary meristems and secondary meristems so this is all about meristems